In this video, we are going to uncover the contentious tale of Hosea, a man of unwavering faith who lived through unimaginable circumstances. Against all odds, he imparted a profound lesson in love and redemption that challenges our comprehension. Explore how this ancient biblical narrative has the potential to reshape your perspectives on forgiveness and fidelity. Prepare to be astonished by what Hosea did for his unfaithful spouse and the profound implications it carries about the strength of genuine love. Join us as we delve into the enigmatic layers of this captivating story. Why did God instruct Hosea to wed a woman with a questionable reputation? Hosea's account, as a divine messenger in the scriptures, is as striking in modern times as it was in the past. According to Hosea 1-2 in the Amplified Bible, God communicated with Hosea the son of Beeri during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and also during the rule of Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel. It was during this period that God, speaking through Hosea, issued an extraordinary directive to marry a woman known for her unfaithfulness and to raise a family with her. As the land had strayed far from the path of the Lord due to widespread immorality. To gain deeper insights into this account, it is imperative to grasp the societal backdrop of that historical era characterized by peace and affluence. Hosea was not merely a prophet among many, he stands as the foremost among the twelve minor prophets of the Old Testament. His prophetic ministry unfolded in an age of a divided kingdom post the reigns of David and Solomon, a time when the people of God were divided into two nations following a bitter civil conflict. Hosea's preaching spanned a considerable duration, notably during the rule of Jeroboam II, a period marked by Israel's unprecedented autonomy and prosperity following triumphs in various battles. Yet, as prosperity flourished, Israelite society began to deteriorate, giving rise to a culture marred by corruption and moral decay. The Israelites started attributing accomplishments that were divine blessings to Bay and engaged in the worship of foreign deities. This narrative prompts us to ponder over how affluence and success can sway the moral compass of a society. Through his unconventional mission, Hosea provokes profound contemplation on themes of allegiance, faith, and the repercussions of drifting away from divine guidance. The Israelites violated their covenant with God, forsaking his laws. As articulated in Hosea 8.1, put the trumpet to your lips. An eagle is over the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. They abandoned their faith in God, seeking alliances with foreign nations. The idolatry and disloyalty of Israel were viewed by the divine as a type of spiritual infidelity. The people prioritized self-indulgence, neglecting fundamental principles such as justice and righteousness, opting instead for lawlessness, chaos, financial deceit, bribery, corruption, and a perversion of justice where righteousness was only attainable through bribery in the courts. Even though these occurrences transpired more than two millennia ago, the parallels with contemporary Western society are undeniably striking. Both Bethel and Samaria engaged in associations with harlots and licentious women, mistakenly believing that such acts would sway God into bestowing blessings upon their harvests. Additionally, they erected a golden calf in Bethel, blatantly contravening the divine prohibition against graven images. While God could have opted to start afresh with a new populace, he remained bound to the people of Israel. Resolute in upholding the covenant he had forged with them, he couldn't turn a blind eye to their transgressions and feign ignorance of their deeds. The initial message imparted by God to Hosea left an indelible mark on his life, a pattern often observed in divine interactions. Perhaps one might have preferred God to relay a message concerning someone else, Nonetheless, before the prophet could address the nation, he needed to receive the specific word that God had reserved for him. The task assigned to him was arduous. He was directed to take a woman of ill repute as his spouse. Why did God issue this directive to Hosea? It stemmed from the nation's grave act of infidelity, symbolized by their abandonment of the Lord. 
Through this command to Hosea, God depicted a recurring motif in the Old Testament, portraying the Lord as the husband of Israel, with their persistent, fervent attraction to idols likened to the adulterous cravings of an unfaithful partner. His people's disloyalty mirrored that of a harlot. This vivid analogy elucidates how our idolatrous tendencies and disrespect for the divine affect God akin to the anguish inflicted upon an innocent spouse in an adulterous liaison. By instructing Hosea to wed a woman of ill repute, God placed him in a position to empathize with his sentiments and symbolically mirrored Israel's infidelity to Yahweh. Hosea entered into matrimony with Goma, a harlot. Despite her chronic unfaithfulness, she bore a child prompting God to direct Hosea to christen their offspring with names symbolic of the impending divine judgment upon Israel. Hosea adhered to God's command, marrying Goma, and in due course they welcomed a son. God instructed Hosea to name the child Jezreel, a significant act given the nuanced meanings of names in the original Hebrew scriptures. This directive was profoundly challenging, Contrary to expectations, Goma didn't forsake her occupation as a prostitute following her marriage to Hosea, a fact that would soon become apparent. This wasn't a narrative of Hosea rescuing a fallen woman and restoring her virtue through love and compassion. He wed a harlot, perhaps nurturing the vain hope that she would renounce her immorality and pledge her fidelity solely to him. While she initially exhibited signs of commitment to Hosea, the rigors of life eventually led her back to her former profession. She might have acted out of sheer boredom, driven by feelings of neglect or unmet needs. Regrettably, our motives for idolatry mirror these baseless justifications when we elevate another deity above the one true Lord God. Throughout history, prostitution has been often termed as the oldest profession, serving as a prevalent means of earning income, even in ancient biblical times. The Bible unequivocally condemns prostitution as a sin. Proverbs warns, For a prostitute is a deep pit, and a wayward wife is a narrow well. Like a bandit she lies in wait and multiplies the unfaithful among men. How could these seemingly disparate realms converge and intertwine? It would serve as a lasting lesson echoing through centuries. Alongside God's admonitions, two calamities befell the region, almost as if God sought to capture their attention through a more overt means akin to a natural disaster. This was no ordinary tremor. Picture the reaction of Hosea's neighbors to this unconventional act, a young prophet marrying a woman of the night, proclaiming, The Lord has ordained this union. Doubtless, his acquaintances pondered, That's his story, but what's the real truth? Yet, truth be told, God had indeed instructed Hosea to take this woman as his wife. Consequently, Hosea stood as the final prophet dispatched to Israel, forewarning them of the inevitable consequences should they persist in their unrepentant ways. In Hosea 1.6, Goma conceived once more, giving birth to a daughter. The Lord instructed Hosea, Name her lo Ruhamah, no mercy, for I will no longer show mercy to the house of Israel and will withhold forgiveness. However, I will show mercy to the house of Judah, saving them not through military might but by the Lord their God. Subsequently, when Goma weaned lo Ruhamah, she conceived and bore a son. The Lord directed, Name him lo Ammi, not my people, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. The name Lo Ammi, translating to not my people, served as a stark reminder with every invocation that the people of Israel had estranged themselves from the Lord God and were no longer considered his chosen ones. Given Goma's persistence in her profession, there might have been a bitter irony in the name, even raising the possibility that the child in question was not biologically Hosea's, but someone else's offspring. The message that God conveyed to Israel through Hosea was not only profoundly challenging, but also served to make Hosea's own life exceedingly arduous. Through the prophet Hosea, God asserted that Israel had forsaken him to engage in the spiritual prostitution of wine and new wine, emphasizing that both men and women had strayed into adultery with ritual prostitutes in the worship of false deities. 
Goma symbolized a fitting representation due to the nature of the idolatrous practices prevalent among the people. Her spiritual infidelity paralleled actual physical adultery. Hosea prophesied that God would eradicate the names of the Baals from the mouths of the Israelites, uniting them eternally in righteousness, unwavering love, and compassion. Throughout various sections of the Bible, the allegories of adultery and prostitution are employed to illustrate those who prove disloyal to the Lord, to whom they rightfully belong. In the New Testament, similar language is evoked in Revelation 17 too, where it mentions, With her the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her immorality. Despite God's proclamation of impending judgment, the period of judgment will not endure indefinitely. Beyond the days of reckoning lie a time brimming with blessings, prosperity, and abundant grace. Hosea 1.10 proclaims, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, immeasurable and countless. In the very place where they were once told, You are not my people, they shall now be declared, You are the sons of the living God. Then the sons of Judah and Israel shall be united, appointing a single leader, rising together in unity, for the day of Jezreel shall be truly magnificent. Dear children of God, the poignant tale of marital turmoil in the life of the prophet Hosea serves as a narrative backdrop for God to impart a profound lesson about His boundless love for His people. God's love for us surpasses all bounds. Hosea endured a life marked by profound sorrow, enduring sunless days and sleepless nights, as his wife Goma strayed repeatedly, contemplating a return to her former way of life. Many misconstrue the notion that drifting from the Lord is inconsequential, however. Goma's narrative post-departure from Hosea's abode underscores the immense challenges life presents when one strays farther than anticipated. In a bid to aid his mother, Hosea directly addressed his children. Let us witness the poignant departure of Goma in Hosea 2.5. For their mother has played the harlot, she who conceived them has acted shamefully. For she declared, I will pursue my lovers, who provide my bread and water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. Like a scene from a film, I can envision Hosea on the day Goma departed with her bags packed leaving without bidding farewell to her offspring. Oftentimes, individuals stray from the path of the Lord in pursuit of gratifying their basic needs and fulfilling their desires, mistakenly believing that worldly pursuits can offer contentment. The adversary is crafty, leading people to believe that true happiness lies in following him and embracing the world. Yet, the stark truth remains that enduring joy cannot be found by turning away from the Lord, the world offers only fleeting pleasures. Goma's descent marks the onset of her tribulations. Initially, her return to a life of prostitution seemed prosperous. However, it would become evident that she had chosen the wrong course. At every turn, Hosea fought for Goma, mirroring God's unwavering commitment to his wayward children. As Goma's circumstances continued to deteriorate, she resolved to return to her initial husband, acknowledging, I will return to Hosea, for life was better when I was with him. As Goma grappled with despair, the revelry faded, giving way to mounting anxiety, heightened concerns, and eventual remorse. In Hosea, the Lord instructed Hosea, Go, show love to a woman who is loved by her husband, but is unfaithful. This reflects how the Lord loves the children of Israel despite their worship of other gods and affection for raisin cakes. Subsequently, Hosea purchased Goma for fifteen shekels of silver, a homer and a half of barley, instructing her, You must remain with me for many days. You shall not engage in harlotry or belong to another man, and likewise I will be faithful to you. The children of Israel will endure an extended period without a ruler offerings, sacred pillars, ephods, or household idols. Eventually they will return, seeking the Lord their God and David their King, trembling before the Lord and His bountiful grace in the days to come. This narrative resonates with the compassionate approach of Jesus Christ towards the woman caught in adultery, offering forgiveness, restoration, and a newfound liberty. 
Hosea serves as a precursor to Jesus Christ, who would later redeem a sinful world through his sacrificial death on the cross. This prophetic book unveils God's boundless and unchanging love for humanity. Yahweh's love is eternal. His faithfulness surpasses human love, which can falter after making solemn promises. Despite our unfaithfulness, God's love remains unwavering, always seeking to reconcile us to Himself. It's significant that the Hebrew term for Yahweh saves or salvation is akin to the name Joshua. Both Hosea and Joshua are linked to Yeshua, which means to save and corresponds to Jesus in English. Through Hosea's life and his relationship with Gomer, God imparted a lesson to the nation, conveying his enduring love despite their unfaithfulness. One commentator reflected that Hosea's love for Gomer exemplified a delicate balance of affection and judgment. This vividly portrays the depth of God's love and his redemptive power over human infidelity. Forgiving an adulterous spouse and welcoming them back home is a profound act. Adultery, etymologically linked to adulterate, denotes diminishing quality by mixing in something else. To adulterate a marriage is to introduce a third party. Adultery involves a married individual engaging voluntarily with someone other than their spouse, breaking their commitment to God. The Bible commences with the sacred union of marriage. Genesis 2.24 states, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Hosea could have condemned his wife harshly under the old covenant's laws where adultery warranted death. Leviticus 2010 declares the penalty for adultery, emphasizing equal punishment for both parties involved. At times, individuals forsake their initial love, resembling the adulteress in Proverbs. Proverbs 7.22 describes the consequences of such actions vividly. The passage concludes with a grim assessment of adultery, highlighting its destructive nature and the path it leads one down. The cautionary messages within Proverbs are meant to evoke a sense of fear in every heart. Although the penalties outlined in the Old Testament for adultery may appear severe, the spiritual repercussions are even more significant. The narrative of Hosea and Gomer stands as a poignant symbol of God's unwavering and boundless love for His chosen people. The theme of God's endless love resonates throughout the entirety of the Bible, providing numerous opportunities to express gratitude for the Lord's enduring love. Psalm 36, 5 extols the Lord's kindness and faithfulness that reach to the heavens and clouds, while Psalm 13, 5 in the Amplified Bible expresses trust in God's mercy and salvation, leading to rejoicing in His deliverance. Hosea's story in the Bible showcases a remarkable display of love. Despite his wife's grievous actions, Hosea extended forgiveness. Romans 8.38-39 reaffirms the inseparable love of God in Christ Jesus, serving as our faithful companion and redeemer who rescues the lost bride and patiently awaits the wandering son. Hosea 2.19-20 in the Amplified Bible illustrates God's eternal commitment to His people in righteousness, justice, love, and mercy, calling for fidelity and recognition of the Lord. The words of love and redemption spoken to ancient Israel offer hope to us today. While it may be challenging, identifying with Gomer's story reminds us of God's capacity to forgive even the gravest transgressions. The Bible recounts instances where individuals involved in immorality, like the prostitute Rahab, were integral to fulfilling God's plans and received blessings for their obedience. In the New Testament, a sinful woman found redemption through her repentance before Jesus, offering a display of heartfelt sorrow, humility, and adoration by anointing His feet with costly perfume and wiping them with her hair. When the Pharisees condemned Jesus for receiving the affection of the sinful woman, he confronted them, embracing her worship instead. Through her faith, Jesus pardoned all her transgressions, welcoming her into his kingdom. To help Hosea comprehend the depths of God's emotions, the Lord orchestrated a profoundly unique experience for him. God often molds prophets through their personal relationships or their absence. 
Jeremiah, instructed by God not to marry, symbolized God's solitude when informing Judah of his solitude due to Israel's absence. Ezekiel, told of his wife's impending death without permission to grieve, mirrored God's grief over the loss of his wife, demonstrating the impending judgment on Judah. In Hosea's case, God imparted his sentiments by guiding him through a distinctive marital ordeal. Hosea sought out Goma, brought her home, courted her, and reconciled with her as his wife once more. Despite this, Goma mistakenly attributed her blessings of grain, wine, and oil to her lovers, unaware that they were gifts from God, channeled through Hosea. Notably, God's final words in Hosea tenderly urge Israel to repent, offering hope and a plea to delay the impending judgment. It must be acknowledged that Hosea's efforts to reconcile Israel with God ultimately failed, his warnings went unheeded, leading to God's execution of promised judgment. Assyria's conquest and exile of Israel in 721 BC marked the definitive end, with no return. Thus concludes the poignant saga of Hosea and Goma, a narrative of love, betrayal, and redemption that transcends time. This story is just one of the many captivating narratives we delve into here. If you found today's insights compelling, envision the wealth of knowledge and emotion awaiting you in our other videos. Don't miss the opportunity to immerse yourself in more powerful and inspiring tales. If you enjoyed this video, show your support by liking, commenting with your reflections or inquiries, and sharing with loved ones. Let's together spread these invaluable lessons. And if you haven't already joined our community, subscribe now and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming videos that promise to reshape your worldview. Thank you for being with us today. Remember, each video opens a new gateway to knowledge and inspiration. Until next time.